Hello everyone and welcome to this OpenLCA case study. My name is Marie Loubert, I'm working at Green Delta, and today I will be presenting the life cycle assessment of a hooded sweater. This study falls into two parts, an environmental LCA which uses the database EcoInvent and a social LCA using Psilka. Today we will be doing part one, which focuses on the environmental impacts. As you will see, the model of this case study is quite simple. The main objective is to provide some guidance to LCA beginners and to address some common difficulties when using OpenLCA or when carrying a life cycle assessment more generally. The two reports of this study are free of charge and the models are also available for free provided you have an EcoInvent or a Psilka license respectively. If you are interested in purchasing these databases, you can find more information on OpenLCA Nexus. Many other LCA databases are also available on the website, so feel free to take a look. So back to, this, back to the study, I will begin with a short introduction to give a bit of context. Then we will go through the four phases of ISO 1440. So the call in scope, the life cycle inventory, the impact assessment, and the interpretation of the results. We will finish with some limitations and conclusions. So first of all, over the last decades, the European consumption of clothes has kept increasing. This is not without impacts on the environment, which is precisely what we will be studying today. The reason we chose a product made of cotton is that this fabric is widely used for clothes. As you can see on the graph from Textile Exchange, cotton is the second fiber used in the world in terms of volume after polyester. Within cotton production, the portion of organic cotton is rising, notably because consumers and manufacturers are becoming more aware of the impact of traditional cotton which requires large amount of water, but also of chemicals. India is the world's biggest producer of organic cotton, representing around 50% of the global production. For all of these reasons, we chose to evaluate an organic cotton sweater manufactured in India and then retailed in Germany. But more details about this are coming in the Cohenscope. There are mostly two applications for this study. The first one is to carry a hotspot analysis of the supply chain. So in other terms, to find the most contributing elements to the total results. And the second application is to evaluate how these impacts vary depending on the location of production and the behavior of the user. The functional unit we chose for this LCA is one organic cotton 2XL hooded sweater, which corresponds to a weight of 750 grams and which is used for a year. Some details about the scenarios. So the first variable is the location of manufacturing. The base case takes place in Maharashtra in the west of India, while the alternative scenario is in Odisha in the east of the country. These locations are among the biggest producing regions of organic cotton in India, which is why we chose them. For the behavior of the user, several variables will be studied. The first one is the number of washes. The base case assumes a washing once a week, while the alternative scenario assumes one every two weeks, so respectively 52 and 26 washings in total. Then we will be studying the load of the washing machine. Some studies found that German users fill the washing machine with 3.8 kilograms of clothes on average. But we will also evaluate the case where the machine is filled as its maximum load, which is 6 kilograms. Finally, we will study two cases for the type of drying. The base case where it is air dried and an additional scenario where it is tumble dried. Here you can see the system boundary. 
So you have here the foreground system framed in red. As you can see, it is a gravel to grave system. So from the extraction of the raw materials and the pre-processing to the end of life of the product. In the background system, you will find upstream the fabric, the zipper and the polyester resin production. This last product is basically just used to glue the other two materials together. After the extraction and pre-processing of raw materials, you will find the manufacturing of the sweater in India. Then the distribution stage, the use of the products in Germany and finally the end of life. As you can see this last step, so where the product is, is disposed of, belongs to the background system with this time as a downstream process. Now some information about the tools and methodology. For the software, OpenLCA 1.11 was used. This is going to change in the second part of the study, the social LCA, where I switched to the OpenLCA 2.0 version. The database is EcoInvent 3.8 cutoff and the LCA method is the environmental footprint 3.0. Overall, it is important that your assumptions, methods and choice of database are applied consistently throughout the study. It needs to be completed with sensitivity checks to assess the extent to which the results are determined by specific methodological choices. This is typically what we are going to do when we evaluate the different scenarios that I mentioned earlier. Here is an overview of the assumptions we made for the study. For the manufacturing, the assumed composition of the sweater is 94% of cotton and the rest is divided between the polyester resin and the brass zipper. For the use, regarding the washing machine characteristics, it is a type C machine with a maximum load of 6 kg. The sweater is washed um, 52 times in total at 60 degrees and it is air dried. 3.8 kg of clothes, as we said earlier, are loaded in the washing machine every time. Finally, regarding the end of life, it is assumed that the product is treated as, man as municipal waste, which implies that there will be no reuse or recycling of the sweater. Now let's take a look at the life cycle inventory. So for the raw materials, the input weight of the components was calculated from volume measurements and the density of materials. For the brass, of which composition you can see here, and for the polyester resin production, generic processes were taken directly from EcoInvent. However, for the fabric production, some EcoInvent processes were adapted to the case. So the organic cotton fibers production was taken as such from EcoInvent, but from the following stage it was adapted to fit organic cotton. So this one was modified to take organic cotton fibers as inputs, and the waste is estimated to be 5% of the yarn. For the cotton fabric production, it was also modified to adapt to organic cotton specifically, and around 2.5% of the fabric is disposed of. Now regarding the manufacturing, the fabric wasted during the process is estimated, it's estimated to be 11.8%. Both this value and the electricity consumption are estimated from the literature. And additionally, it is assumed that the garment manufacturer is located 50 kilometers away from the fabric manufacturer. For the distribution stage, the distances were calculated based on the recommendation of the PEF methodology, the product environmental footprint. So this methodology applies for manufacturers outside Europe. It includes 1,000 kilometers of truck for the sum of distances from harbour to factory outside and inside Europe, in addition to a distance 
by boat calculated by sea rates between India and Europe. And it divides between uh, the sea distance and the inland waters distance. For the use stage, the EcoInvent process washing, drying and finishing laundry was adapted with an electricity input from the literature and was calibrated to one kilogram of washed clothes. The input of the product used sweater in the life cycle process is given by the formula that you see here. So you have the, the weight, of course, of the sweater multiplied by the number of washes, multiplied by the machine capacity, and divided by the actual filling of the machine. So this is to, to allocate the sweater depending on how much it is full in the washing machine. Finally, for the end of life, the EcoInvent process municipal solid waste was used as such, so no modification. Now let's move to the structure of the model. You can see here the traditional linear, as we can call it, way to build your supply chain on OpenLCA. The intermediate product from each stage, so here for instance manufacture sweater, is, um, is used as an input for the next stage. So it just goes along the chain. A product system is created from the end-of-life process and this is basically what you obtain. It was originally structured like this, so in a linear supply chain, but it was changed to have a better visibility of the results, as we will see in the next section of the presentation. But for now, let's see what we actually use as a structure. So this is the current graph of the model which includes, as you can see, five life cycle stages. And they are all centralized around this last process, the life cycle process. So you must consider two things when you model like this, and we will come to the advantages later on. So the first one is that you have to pay attention not to double count anything. The stages must contain only their input and outputs without including the intermediate product in the inputs. I will give an example to make it a bit clear. So this is the distribution stage. So as you can see, it's only the input related to the stage in itself without, you cannot see here the manufacturer's sweater because it's already counted here. So for the end of life, this is how it looks. As you can see, the inputs are empty since we did not put the intermediate product. And the transport is already included in the waste process that we chose. Because this process is a market for kind of process, which means the, the transport is already in the provider and we don't need to put it in the inputs. But if you did not choose the market for type of process, you would have the transports and the inputs here. So now let's dive into the life cycle impact assessment and the interpretation of the results. Let's start with the first application of the study, which is the hotspot analysis. What we want to do is to analyze where the impacts come from within the supply chain. For this, we first have to calculate the impacts of the whole life cycle, which shows for, for this part the LCA method environmental footprint 3.0. And then in the results, we are looking at the contribution tree. So it looks like this. So this is with the centralized structure that I showed earlier. You can clearly see the contribution of each life cycle stage use, manufacturing, distribution, and of life. And within manufacturing, you can see what is due specifically to the manufacturer, so the electricity and so on, but you can also see the raw materials, for instance, textile production, market for brass, for the zipper, and so on. 
if we had kept the traditional linear structure, um, you would have results which look like this. So it is the same result that you can see. Quick check, here textile production, manufacturing. But it is harder to read because, because each stage is included into the one that comes afterwards in the supply chain. So for instance, if you want to calculate the use, you have to subtract the rest of the chain to the overall impact. So it is not wrong, it is just harder to, to analyze. So we recommend using this, but again, it is the same results. Now, this is a graph illustrating the contribution of life cycle stages to the total results. So for this data treatment, we chose to, to group the polyester, zipper, and textile production into this category raw materials to, to, to separate what, uh, what's directly in manufacturing, so for instance electricity and so on, from the actual uh, extraction of raw materials and pre-processing. So it can be seen from this contribution analysis that most of the environmental impacts are due to the use stage, at least a quite significant part of it. But also the raw materials. It is mostly divided between the, these two stages, the manufacturing, distribution, and end of life are not really significant. In some cases, you can barely see their contribution, actually. Within the raw materials, a very contributing process is the cultivation of cotton. It requires arable land, which increases the land use. Here, as you can see, it influences acidification, but also eutrophication and particulate matter. Batch dyeing is also contributing to acidification and eutrophication, and it is mostly due to the burning of fossil fuels during the process. Brass also contributes punctually to the impacts, for instance, in the category resource use of minerals and metals. Here, within the, the blue contribution, it is mostly due to brass. Within the use stage, the most contributing elements for almost all categories is the electricity consumption of the washing machine. Additionally, the consumption of tap water during the washing machine, during the washing, sorry, is responsible for the high share in the water used impact category. So this one here, it's mostly due to tap water. What we will do now is using the normalized and weighted results in order to evaluate which impact category contributes the most and focus on these categories. In the first column, here you can find the characterized results which we used so far for the hotspot analysis. So the contribution trees is a percent of the impact assessment results. The classification and characterization of the results, which leads to this column here, are mandatory steps when carrying LCAs, while the normalization and weighting here stage, which come afterwards, are optional. This is because there is not consensus about these two results over here, but the characterized results, you need to have them for every study and they are mandatory. To obtain the normalized results, each impact score are divided in the software by a normalization factor which is specific to the method that you chose. Then, the weighted results are obtained by normalization, uh, uh, obtained by, sorry, multiplying here the normalized results by weighting factors. The weighted results put all the categories in a common unit, which means you can finally compare the impact categories with each other and rank them, what we did here. But you could not do it before with the character as result, because as you can see, it's very different unit. So here, 
you cannot compare the categories, but with the weighting factor, which is the very point of it, you can finally compare the different impact categories. So the rank, let's take a look quickly. The first one we have is climate change, then eutrophication freshwater, resource use minerals and metals, and resource use of fossils. They are the four first one. And we're gonna focus, we're gonna focus on this one afterwards, but first I'm gonna show exactly where you can find this information for your impact assessment method in the software. Before moving to this, please note that applying weighting may result in less transparency and we always recommend to present both non-weighted and weighted results for your studies. Furthermore, it should be clear that we cannot say that climate change is more or less important than land use as the categories represent non-comparable issues. So to find the factor that we mentioned, you have to go in your navigation pane to go to the indicators and parameters and here in the impact assessment methods. Once you're there in the tab normalization weighting, you can find both, both sets of factors here. And again, this is very specific to the method, to the impact assessment method that you choose. So that's why also it's so important to communicate about which one you're using to calculate the results. Let's take a look at the source of impact for climate change first. You can see here the contribution of processes as percentage of the total impacts. A very large part of the impacts are due to the electrical, electrical here, consumption of the washing machine here. And within raw materials, the cotton fabric is responsible for most of the impacts because you can see here that the other large part of it actually begin, uh, belong to this stage. So here, yarn production, batch dyeing, and electricity for knitting. This is all related to the fabric production. For the category eutrophication freshwater, the electrical consumption of the washing machine represents nearly half of the impact here. The impacts of the raw materials mainly come from the yarn production for the cotton fabric, which is itself mainly due to the cultivation of seed cotton here and production. For the category resource use of fossils, the electrical consumption of the washing machine is once again very impacting. You can find the same magnitude of um, por portion of the impact. Um, the distribution of impacts is very similar than climate change, actually. Very similar graphs, but with a few parts due to the end of life. For the category resource use and metals, the biggest contributors by far is the raw material stage, particularly the production of brass and its transformation into a zipper, which is represented by metal working here. Now that we saw where the impacts come from in the base case that we just studied, let's see what happens if we change some of the assumptions. So the first variable that we're going to evaluate is the location of manufacturing. The base case is in Maharashtra, in the west part of India, while the alternative scenario takes place in Odisha, in the east of the country. These scenarios can be modeled by changing the parameters that you see in the manufacturing process. So this is a parameter impacting the electricity input of manufacturing. Second, we are going to evaluate the washing machine load, then the number of washes, and finally the type of drying. So the first two, they are in the um, final process that we created, the big centralizing process, hooded sweater life cycle, we created a parameter to change the input of the 
of the intermediate product washed sweater and for the type of drying it is within the use so within the process modeling the washing machine that I created a parameter to have the possibility to input an electricity consumption from the tumble dryer which is put to zero or one depending on it is air dried or tumble dried. So we will now see what happens by varying these four parameters. So first what you want to do is to compare in the product in the product sorry in the product part. So you create a new project using the same product system here. So the life cycle and what you want to do is just changing the parameters. So here for the is grid, I activated the parameter. Uh, sorry, for Odish, I activated the is grid parameter. And for Maharashtra, you activate the west grid. But as you can see, it's the same product system. You can choose your method, the impact categories you want to be displayed, and then you can calculate the results. So here, you have the characterized results for the two scenarios of production. As you can see, they are very, very similar. There is occasionally about maybe 1% of change, but not more. This very few variation could be expected, actually, because we saw in the um, contribution analysis that the manufacturing was actually not contributing so much to the total impact. So even when changing the electricity, which possibly changes the impact of the manufacturing, it's not so representative in the whole supply chain. It's not so significant, at least, in the impacts. So we studied the location of production. Now let's take a look at the behavior of the user scenarios. So the other three. So we have the base case, as you can see here, without a dryer with 3.8 kilograms of filling and 52 washes. And this will change at every scenario. For full load, the filling is at six, which is the maximum capacity of the machine. Less cycles, you can see it's only 26 cycles. And tumble dryer, we activate the electricity input of the tumble dryer. Again, it is the same product system as you can see here, but with different parameters. So this is what it looks like in terms of relative results. So every category, every impact category was set um, the, um, the maximum was set to the maximum value out of the four scenarios was set to 100% and the other scenarios are calculated depending on this maximum value which is in this case systematically the tumble dryer scenario. So you can see that by increasing the electricity consumption of the washing machine, it increases compared to the base case, this, the impact in every category. So now let's take a look at the other two scenarios. You can see that by washing your clothes at, fu at full load, it decreases a bit in every category because it allocates some of the impact to the other clothes in the washing machine. And by washing it less, this was also to be expected, it also decreases the impacts in every category. So knowing this, we can explore additional scenarios which modify the electricity consumption, such as the washing temperature, because the tumble dryer scenario mostly, use, mostly modifies the electrical input, and you can see it has very significant impacts. So now we're going to focus only on the electrical consumption of the washing machine. So, for now, this is how it looks. Um, we have this dryer electricity input here with the parameter. And before we had only this electrical consumption 
for the part where it is actually washed. What, we, what I did was to create on the same line new parameters to be able to choose which electrical consumption you're using depending on the temperature that you're washing your clothes with. Additionally, you can also just create three different lines if it's clearer for you. And as it could be expected, the electrical consumption increases with the temperature. So now we're going to assess what it represents in terms of impacts. So again, create a project, you change the parameters depending on the temperature and this is, this is what it looks like. So as you can see, the impacts in all categories are proportional to the temperature, to the washing temperature, because the impacts are themselves proportional to the electrical consumption. So impact category here, ionizing radiation is particularly sensitive to variation in electricity. So now, what can we conclude out of all of this? So first of all, we have to take in consideration the different limitation of the study before driving any conclusion. So one pretty significant limitation to this LCA is the quality of data, because as this entire product and manufacturers were completely fictitious, no primary data, data was collected, including for the foreground system. This is usually not the case in LCA, but it was the case here, as this is a methodological case study. A second limitation is that the zipper and polyester production were taken from a global eco-invent generic process, so we took a proxy of a global process instead of taking one specific to India. Another limitation is that the cotton fabric was only available in one location in India instead of several regions that we, that we wished we could have modeled to represent, for instance, Maharashtra, Odisha and so on. But here it was only possible to model one region in India. This is another limitation. And finally, the lack of data regarding reuse or recycling of clothes in Germany made us model the end of life as being only municipal waste, which is of course a limitation because in real life you could um, you could give your sweater, you could recycle it, and this is not included into this uh, study because of the complexity of the recycling process and also because of lack of data in general. To conclude, we saw that the raw materials, particularly cotton, and the use phase were the two most contributing stages. So within the raw materials, the impact mainly come from the production of seed cotton, but, but more research is actually needed to be able to give recommendation about a more sustainable supplier. At the time being, the quality and the model in general do not allow to make strong conclusion because there is too much uncertainty around them. Regarding the use, the electrical, the electrical consumption of the washing machine bears most of the impacts. And knowing this, the user can reduce the impacts of the product by washing the sweater less often, also by filling the, washing, the machine to its full load, and finally, favoring air drying over tumble drying. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Um, feel free to ask any question in the comment part of this video and we will do our best to answer them. And for those interested in social life cycle assessment, I will see you in the second part of this study.